As part of the Pathfinder 2e remaster, Paizo has gone from the Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder 2nd Edition to the new GM Core for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And strangely, I have to conclude that while the new GM Core is a more necessary product, it's not necessarily a more useful product. Let's talk about that on today's episode of The Local Disaster Tour Guide. Hello travelers and tourists, my name is Mark and I am the local disaster tour guide. That's right, I am a storyteller that is desperately trying to avoid losing a reputation point with the Pathfinder content creator community as a result of this video. Welcome to a journey through the fantastic world of TTRPGs like Pathfinder and Starfinder, and welcome to another review video where I'm going to be talking about the GM core for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This is the second book that Paizo released as part of their remaster project, and as the name indicates, this focuses on the kind of content and material that game masters need in order to successfully approach Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about what you can expect to find in this book, and I'm going to give you some of my overall thoughts and observations about this book to help give you an idea of what you can expect if you choose to pick this product up. Now before I go any farther, I do want to let you know Paizo did send me a free copy of the PDF for both the Player Core and the GM Core for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. That gave me a little bit of extra time to start reading through these products so that I could bring these reviews to you. And I do want to say to Paizo, thank you very much for providing those review PDFs for me. I did really appreciate that. However, to anyone viewing this video, I do want to let you know that Paizo did not attempt to influence this review or the player core review in any fashion, the thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are purely my own. As you can see, I did go pick up one of the retailer exclusive sketch covers for the GM core. So this is very much a product that I was interested in acquiring for myself, and I did pick up a physical copy at my own expense. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of my thoughts about this product. The way I like to do reviews on this channel is I actually begin at the end. I give it a couple of grades, and then I give you my thoughts on its strengths and weaknesses. I give you the big picture first, and then I work my way through the content in the book to help you understand how I came to that final conclusion. The two grades that I give any product I review are an initial, what I consider, target grade for the product, and then a final overall grade reflecting whether or not I think a book hit what it set out to do. And to give you a little bit of a spoiler alert for how this video is going to play out, the original Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder 2nd Edition was honestly one of my favorite books in Pathfinder 2e. It is a book that honestly exceeded expectations, and exceeded expectations in what I thought was a pretty positive way. I got a lot of use out of the Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder 2e, so the GM Core for the Pathfinder 2e Remaster definitely has some big shoes to fill, and I'll let you know up front that while I like this book, unfortunately I don't think it filled the shoes it needed to fill. But we'll get into that in a moment. Please remember this important grain of salt. The best review you will ever get for any product is to try it for yourself before you buy it. I strongly recommend, if you can, check out this book at a local gaming store, if you can borrow it from a friend, Anything you can do to examine a product for yourself before making a purchase decision, that is ultimately going to give you the best review or the best idea of whether or not a product is right for you. While I do my best to offer my sincere thoughts in these review videos, at the end of the day my opinions are just that, opinions, and the best review you will ever get is to try a product for yourself before you buy it. A few more things before we get to the review proper. 
First off, this is the Christmas season, and this is the last major video that I am going to be releasing before I give myself a Christmas break. However, I am hoping to return on January 1st with one of my, I don't know why I do this to myself, New Year's Super videos. I have a plan, we'll see if it works. So in my brief absence, to everyone who watches these videos, Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, blessings to you and your family, and I hope to talk to you again soon. The other thing I'd like to say before diving into the review proper is, well, it's the YouTube stuff. You knew it was coming. If you enjoy content like this, please remember to do all the stuff that supports the channel. You can like and share the video, you can subscribe to the channel, and if you want to be a part of the Disaster Tour Guide community, you can check out my free Discord or my Patreon, both of which will be linked in the video description below. However, far and away, the best way to support this channel is to jump down to the comments section and be a part of the conversation. I love hearing what you have to say. My community has offered some fantastic perspective over the years, and I always feel like I learned something from you all. So definitely jump down, join the conversation, share your thoughts and ideas. It doesn't just feed the algorithm, it really does encourage me. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is talk about the initial and overall grades that I have for the Game Master Core in the Pathfinder 2e Remaster. But to do that, I feel like I need to offer some context to help you understand these grades. The original Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder 2nd Edition was about 255 pages long, and it was what I would consider a classic example of a B-tier product. What is a B-tier product in my mind? It is either a product that is only going to see occasional use at the gaming table, or a product that is focused towards a narrow selection of a game's player base. In the case of a Game Mastery Guide or the Game Master Core, it's obvious that the latter is appropriate here. This is a book that is targeted towards a specific subsection of the Pathfinder player base, namely Game Masters. So when I was approaching the original Game Mastery Guide, I was looking at it as a B-tier product. That is what I expected, that is what I hoped to see. And in my final conclusions about the product, I ultimately gave it a grade of a B plus because I felt that Paizo did some really cool stuff that elevated it just a little above what a normal B-tier product should be. The Game Mastery Guide is the obvious precursor to the Game Master Core for the Pathfinder 2e Remaster, but in the remaster, Paizo made some pretty significant changes to how they are choosing to organize their books. The original Pathfinder Core rulebook included both player and Game Master content, meaning that when the Game Master Guide came out, it was just additional content for Game Masters. Now, in the Pathfinder 2e Remaster, what Paizo has chosen to do is they actually took the Game Master content from the core rulebook and the Game Master content from the Game Master Guide and combine them together into a single product. In some ways, this is actually advantageous as the new Game Master Core is actually a larger product than the original Game Mastery Guide. The original product was about 255 pages and the Game Master Core clocks in at around 335 pages, meaning that a lot of content has been brought over to this book. Now, there are a lot of nuances to this conversation that Honestly, we'll get into later in this video, but one of the big changes that helps highlight this is Chapter 5 in the GM Core book is called the Treasure Trove because all of the magic items from the original Core rulebook have been moved over to the GM Core. The vast majority of Chapter 5 of this book did not exist in the previous version of this product, and that is one of the major changes that you will notice going from the old Game Master Guide to the new GM Core. When you take all of this together, functionally what this means is the GM Core is no longer a B-tier product in my mind, or at least it's not supposed to be. In the original release of Pathfinder 2e, if you had the core rulebook, you could run the entire game. You didn't need the GM guide. But now, Paizo has shuffled material around, and now there is content that you do need in the GM core if you want to run and play Pathfinder 2nd Edition. 
Now as a quick aside, I'm sure some people are going to say, what about digital resources like Archives of Nethys? But allow me to say that for the purposes of this conversation, I'm talking about physical products that you use at the gaming table. In choosing to move content from the core rulebook over to the Game Master Core, Paizo has effectively elevated the target of what this product is supposed to be. And that means for my initial or target grade for the GM Core, this book should be an A tier product. This book is very much a necessity if you're going for physical products in this game. This is something that Game Masters are going to need, and because of all of that important magical treasure that is a big part of the game, it's something that players are honestly going to reference. The GM Core has become very much an expected purchase if you're diving into physical products for the Pathfinder 2 Remaster. So, the initial or target grade on this book is an A. And the overall grade, I'm sad to say, a B-. Overall, there is a lot of really good stuff about the GM Core for the Pathfinder 2e Remaster. Last year, I was working on a series where I was actually studying through the Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder 2e because I considered it such a strong product. And I put that series on hold because I knew the remaster was coming. Now that the remaster is here, I am hoping to work through the GM Core because there is a lot of high quality content in this book. A lot of the great things that were there before, they're still here. There's a lot of great things that Game Masters, especially new Game Masters, can get from this product. I do think the GM Core is a good book, but unfortunately, because of the way Paizo chose to reorganize the books, they raised the status of what this book should be, and ultimately didn't climb quite as high as they needed to do. I hope that statement makes sense, or at the very least, I hope you understand where I'm coming from on that point as we work our way through this product. Okay, so let's talk about the strengths first, because I do want to emphasize that there is a lot of good content in this book. If you look at the GM Core overall, I think that there is a lot of very practical planning content for Game Masters in the GM Core. And I do want to emphasize the planning part of that strength. I really think if you look at this product as a resource when you are planning your games, when you're laying out what you want to do as a Game Master, I think there is a lot of great content in this book. Two items in particular that carried over from the Game Mastery Guide that really highlight this are the building creatures and building hazard rules, and then also the victory points subsystem, or what I like to call the victory points and friends subsystems. Those particular references are really, really useful for a Game Master when they are planning out their content. I got a lot of use out of that content from the original Game Mastery Guide, and seeing that it is still available in the GM Core, that is a very good thing for this product. And if you are interested in running Pathfinder 2nd Edition, these tools and resources are really going to help you. There are just some absolutely top-tier game planning resources in this book, and Paizo really offers a lot of support for Game Masters that I think other companies really could learn a thing or two from. But, we do need to flip over to the weaknesses side. If the content in the GM Core is really, really practical for planning a game, it's not nearly as practical in this version of the book for referencing during a game. And that, to me, is an important distinction. One of the biggest changes from the Game Mastery Guide to the GM Core is the old NPC gallery, which was right around 40 pages of just NPC characters that you could drop into your game immediately. That section is entirely gone. It doesn't exist anymore. And, honestly, that was my most used section of the original Game Mastery Guide. I use that NPC reference all the time. Now, please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there are no good reference materials in this book. Some of the stuff, like sample hazards, is something that you as a GM can very easily pull out and use very quickly. So there is some reference material here, but one of the largest chunks of useful reference material is just gone. 
And that to me is ultimately what hurts this book overall. If I am planning a Pathfinder 2e game, the GM Core is still a fantastic product that I think you can get a lot of mileage out of, but when you're actually running a game at the gaming table, I don't think you're actually going to open the GM Core in very many situations, and that ultimately just hurts the overall utility of this product. By adding some of the running the game content and the magical items to the GM Core, Paizo elevated how important this book should be as an overall purchase, and I do think if you're interested in Pathfinder 2e content, at least one person at your table is going to need a copy of this book. But, unfortunately, in shuffling materials around, some of the most useful material got shoved out of the book, and that is something that just leaves me a bit disappointed. Now, before I leave Strengths and Weaknesses, I do want to say this. We are still in the middle of the initial phase of the Pathfinder 2e Remaster. Paizo still has two more books in the Remaster that are going to be coming out. That is Player Core 2 and Monster Core. And it is very, very plausible that Paizo may have made an executive decision to move things like the NPC Gallery over to the Monster Core books. The Bestiaries or Monster Cores play a similar role to the NPC Gallery that was in the Game Mastery Guides, so it would be very logical if they decided to move the NPC Gallery over to the Monster Core line. If Paizo does that, that would alleviate this frustration for me quite a bit, but at this point we don't know if that's true. So at least at this point in time, I have to look at this product as if one of the best tools that Paizo gave us has been taken away, and that just hurts. But let's go ahead and talk about the individual chapters and what you can expect to find in those chapters to help you better understand what is actually available in the GM Core. Up first, we have Chapter 1, which is Running the Game. And if I'm being honest, this is one of the best chapters in the entire book. This chapter could be found in an almost identical fashion in the original Game Mastery Guide, and this chapter in the original Game Mastery Guide was the reason that I was doing an entire series on the Game Mastery Guide. The first chapter of the Game Mastery Guide was just phenomenal. I thought it was an incredible introduction to storytelling and how to storytell Pathfinder 2e. I thought it was really well done then, and that chapter's back, and it's still a really good chapter, especially if you are a brand new storyteller. I think the first chapter, Running the Game, is going to be extremely useful for you. In fact, when I did that video series on the Game Mastery Guide, the very first video was called The Best Words That Paizo Wrote, and the first thing I checked when I got my review PDFs of the Player Core and GM Core I actually opened the GM Core first to see if Paizo kept the best words that they wrote, and I'm happy to say they did. The introduction to storytelling is great in this book. It is a fantastic resource, and Chapter 1 is worth the read for new and experienced Game Masters alike. I think it is a very positive portion of this book. You will get an overview of what Game Mastering is for a tabletop RPG, You'll get a discussion of numerous special considerations that storytellers need to keep in mind. And then you'll get a discussion of the three major modes of play that Pathfinder 2e uses, Encounter, Exploration, and Downtime mode, with specific advice on how to run each of those three modes of play. There is some content in this chapter that was pulled from the original core rulebook, and that is content surrounding how to set DCs in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and how to reward your players at the end of an adventure. Now, really quick, if you are a brand new storyteller to Pathfinder 2nd Edition, allow me to say that there are a series of tables that can be found on page 53 of the new GM Core, and if you have those tables in front of you when you are storytelling Pathfinder 2e, you can honestly make up about 95% of this game, and your players will be none the wiser. Seriously, these are some of the best quick reference tables in the entire game. Seriously, if you know how to use them, your improvisational skills will skyrocket. 
those tables are extremely valuable. So essentially, the best Game Master content from the original core rulebook got added to the best chapter of the Game Mastery Guide, and I have no complaints. That being said, the reward section is a little bit awkward. The reward section is going to talk about handing out experience and handing out treasure. And as I previously mentioned, treasure is now the new Chapter 5 of this product, so the reward section of Chapter 1 is just a little bit awkward, in part because, well, half of the reward section feels like it belongs in a different chapter of this book, but you can also see why it kind of fit in this section of the book. It's a little bit awkward, but overall it's not too big a complaint. Overall, Chapter 1 running the game is a very good chapter and is going to be very, very useful to any storyteller in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Chapter 2 is going to up the ante a little bit and go from running games to building games. If you're looking at the content in this book as a logical progression, you can see what Paizo is thinking here. If the first chapter is the introduction to how to run a game, then the second chapter is really where they begin to give you the tools to have some creative license with the game and really do some of the most fun and entertaining parts of being a storyteller. The first section of this chapter, which is divided into three important parts, talks about campaign, adventure, and encounter design that essentially uses a creative model of storytelling that starts with a very big picture and then sort of gradually focuses in on the specific elements that you want to use in play. Now, I will say as a storyteller, that is not the only way you can go about campaign and adventure and encounter design. And if I'm being fully transparent, it's not the way I normally go about campaign design personally. But that being said, it is a very approachable and easy to use method of campaign design. And especially if you are a brand new storyteller, I think this big picture gradually focusing in model that Paizo offers in this book, I think it's very useful, very practical, and if you're trying to get your feet under you, I think this section is incredibly useful. I think this is a great foundation for the creative art of storytelling. After these three sections, Paizo offers several different variant rules that you can use to modify the parameters of Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and all of the variant rules are their own conversation, but as an example of what you can expect to find here, the ridiculously popular free archetype variant is discussed here. Some additional things you can expect to find in this section of the book include afflictions, such as diseases, poisons, curses, things like that. You'll also get a discussion of the environment and different hazards that people might encounter. And then you get some of the most important tools in this entire book. Paizo offers specific tools to help you build creatures, hazards, and items in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. By the way, as a three-time winner of the RPG Superstar Contest, I absolutely love the Building Creatures resource that Paizo offers in this book, and if you want a very accessible guide on how to design your own monsters, the Building Creatures resource in this chapter is top-notch. Seriously, I love that Paizo provides this, and if you're a storyteller who really wants to get creative in designing your own monsters and own creatures, these tools are just incredible. I am so glad they're here. So I really, really enjoy the first two chapters of the GM Core. The running the game chapter and building the game chapter are both honestly really good. However, now we get to talk about chapter three, The Age of Lost Omens, which honestly, I don't like. I'm just going to be honest, most of this chapter could have been left out of the GM Core, and it would not have bothered me. The Age of Lost Omens chapter is about 30 pages long, and it's going to cover some of the important regions in the Inner Sea. It's going to talk about some different cultures, different creatures, different religions, different factions that you can find in the area. And it's also going to offer some insight on how to stat out nations, settlements, and even planes that might show up in some of your games. So, what's the problem with this chapter? Well, it's 30 pages. And that is a lot of content to try to cover in 30 pages. If you're a longtime viewer of this channel, 
you may know that one of my least favorite books in all of Pathfinder 2nd Edition is the Lost Omens World Guide. That phrase, World Guide, is badly misrepresentative. This book is 135 pages long, and it does not attempt to cover as broad a set of topics as the Age of Lost Omens chapter does in the GM Core. If 135 pages was not nearly enough for the World Guide, then I hate to say it, but 30 pages is not enough for the Age of Lost Omens section in the GM Core. I might be missing something, but I'm pretty sure there is no information in the Religion section of the GM Core that you cannot also find in the Player Core, and in fact, the Player Core has more information about the religions of the Galarian campaign setting. Am I saying that the subject of religions in the campaign setting is not important? Of course not. Understanding the setting and the options inside the setting is important. The problem is 30 pages just isn't enough and it ends up feeling like wasted space. I mean, let's be honest here, we're missing 40 pages of an NPC gallery and there's 30 pages of the Age of Lost Omens that I feel like I'm never going to use. Can you see why this chapter bothers me? I honestly wish that Paizo had saved the campaign setting information for their Lost Omens line and had used this 30 pages for just about anything else because with the exception of some of the discussions of nations, settlements, and plains, I feel like most of the page space in Chapter 3 is just wasted. Now, my complaints about Chapter 3 aside, I will say that the rest of the GM core is honestly pretty solid from my perspective. Chapter 4 gets into subsystems, which are essentially more detailed rule variants that you can use for situations where the base rules of Pathfinder 2e might not have the kind of nuance that you want in portraying particular aspects of the game. The most important portion of this chapter is probably going to be the Victory Points subsystem, though I personally like to call it the Victory Points and Friends subsystem, because what Paizo does here is first they give you a generic Victory Point system that you can use to portray very complex endeavors that your players might engage in. Are your players trying to build their own business? Well, you can take this generic victory point system, modify it a little bit, and test to see if your players can, over a period of time, successfully start their own business. The victory point subsystem is an excellent, flexible, easily adaptable system that Paizo has actually stated could potentially work with almost any role-playing game, and actually they're kind of right about that. It is a pretty solid basis, and then what Paizo does is it takes the Victory Point subsystem and gives you four specific examples of an adapted Victory Point subsystem that are fully ready to go. These are Influence, Research, Chase, and Infiltration. Each of those situations are more complex than could really be resolved by just a few quick dice rolls. It's something that would require some more effort at the gaming table. So you get expanded rules that can help your players build their influence or research mysterious topics or just manage a chase scene. I'll go ahead and say this. I've used the chase rules for Pathfinder 2e multiple times. They work really, really well and they're always really exciting. It's a very well done system. So each of these specific examples Influence, Research, Chase, and Infiltration all help illustrate how you can take the generic Victory Point system and adapt it to specific situations for the purposes of your game. Overall, I think the Victory Points and Friends found in this chapter are a pretty useful set of tools that you'll get a lot of mileage out of as a storyteller. However, there are also some other subsystems that you can find in this section, and we'll go ahead and mention those really quick as well. They have specific rules for running duels in Pathfinder 2e, and they also have an optional reputation system that you can integrate into your games as well. 
Now, personally, I tend not to use reputation systems in most TTRPGs, but of the various reputation systems that I've seen, this one is pretty solid, so if I was going to use reputation, I do think this one is pretty well done. They also have rules for leadership, exploration, and vehicles. Now, the leadership rules, I'll be honest, I haven't dug too deep into, so I don't have much to say on those. The exploration rules are a lot of fun. I've used them several times in Pathfinder 2e games, and, and my players typically enjoy it quite a bit. And any longtime viewer of this channel knows that vehicles are very important to me when it comes to tabletop RPGs. I love a good vehicle chase, and I love a good vehicle combat. So for me personally, the vehicle system is just something I desperately want in any game I run. So naturally, I love the vehicle system in this book as well. I will say that if you're coming from the Game Mastery Guide to the GM Core, they have expanded the vehicle section just a little bit, and I'm definitely a fan. Though at the end of the day, I must say, they still haven't expanded it as fully as I would personally like to see. And then, last but not least, we have the new chapter of this book, which is the Treasure Trove, where Paizo has taken all of the magical items from the original Core rulebook and and transferred them over to the GM Core. All of the content you expect to be here is here. You're going to get magical weapons and armor, you're going to get consumable items, you're going to get wearable magic items, you're going to get magical wands and staves and scrolls and all of those things that you expect, along with some of the unique item discussions that were originally found in the Game Mastery Guide. So that's going to include things like artifacts, intelligent items, cursed items, and in particular, relics, which are one of my favorite rule sets in Pathfinder 2e. All of that content has been brought together in this chapter, and there's not a lot of new stuff here. Most of it's just stuff that's been reworked for the remaster. So most of what you're going to get is what you expect to get in this particular chapter, but it is well presented, it's easy to use, easy to read, and overall I think it's very well done. As long as I can avoid thinking about the terrible naming choice that Paizo made when they renamed the Bag of Holding, I've been avoiding jokes about that for a reason. The Treasure Trove is certainly going to be useful. There is a lot of good content here. None of it's really surprising content. It's all things we've had before, but it is certainly something that you're going to be able to use and get some mileage out of. So at the end of the day, this is a good chapter. And with that, we have an effective overview of what you can expect to find in the GM Core for the Pathfinder 2e Remaster. Overall, as I've said, I do feel like this book is very solid. Chapters 1 and 2 are absolutely amazing. I think they are fantastic and a wonderful support for any Game Master, but especially for new Game Masters. I have no complaints about Chapters 1 and 2. Chapters 4 and 5 are also very solid. I could nitpick those chapters a little bit, but at the end of the day, I think the contents found in Chapters 4 and 5 are pretty good, and I think Game Masters will get good use out of those chapters as well. So I really don't have a lot to complain about with those chapters in specific. Really for me, the biggest flaw of the GM Core is that third chapter, The Age of Lost Omens, because I just feel like the topic they chose to engage with doesn't fit well in the space they were trying to use, and that space could have been better used for, honestly, more practical things, like a good NPC gallery. Ultimately, I think that Chapter 3 of the GM Core is the only sore spot in this book. Beyond that, I do think this is a solid product and something that Game Masters will enjoy, but those are just my thoughts. The time has come for me to turn the conversation over to you and for you to share what you think about the Game Master Core for the Pathfinder 2e Remaster. Do you agree with my assessment of this book? Or do you have any questions about this book that you would like me to revisit when I restart my storytelling in Pathfinder 2e series, hopefully sometime in January? If you have specific questions or just comments to offer, jump down to the comments section and be part of the conversation. And don't forget all that other YouTube stuff. Like, share, subscribe, check out my Discord and my Patreon. All of those links are in the video description. But as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Have a wonderful day.